Holy mother, what a race weekend. The UCI World Series went big this weekend in Lanzerheide, Switzerland, with cross country and the first round of the 2023 Downhill World Cup. So much action to get into junior and under 23 racing, legends winning races in cross country and downhill, and first wins. Let's start with the junior downhill racing. Whilst we've had a junior category in downhill and under 23 in XC for years, this is the first time that they've been broadcast and live as well. So this is a massive step for the youngsters. It'll help them build a profile to a much larger audience, help with sponsorship as well. And if you watch the men's junior downhill, then it was one of the most entertaining and action-packed races of the whole weekend with some massive crashes as well. With the under 23 cross country, short track elite and XC Olympic, junior downhill and elite semi-finals and finals, there was so much racing. For a mountain bike race fan over the weekend to get stuck into, my TV was not off. Plus, of course, we have the shorter highlights free to view on GMBN. There isn't a better time to be a mountain bike race fan. The cross country track is good, punchy climbs with rooty and tech descents and the racers seem to love it. The weekend started off with the XCC cross country short track and it kicked off with a great ride from Jenny Risved taking what is her third back to back short track victory in Lenzerheide and the big German Lucas Schwarzbauer taking the win in the elite men's. In the XCO, Luana Lecomte rode away on the climb from Pauline Fran Perot, who dropped in the last lap and actually was overtaken by Anne Terpstra and Alessandra Keller. The young uh, cyclocross star and winner of round one, Puck Peters, finished in fifth place. Nino Schurter, who lives just at the bottom of the valley from Lenzerheide in Kerr, who obviously loves the place and the style to take the record of most cross-country wins from Julian Absalon. Never underestimate that man. It obviously meant a huge amount to him and his team. His manager, Thomas Frischnecht, was very emotional. The battle for second place hotted up as Nino extended on the last lap. Alan Hatherley came in second. John Theroux actually faded slightly on the last lap to third, with Grio and Valero Serrano in fourth and fifth. Over to the downhill, the track is fast, rocky and rooty. We expected the times to be tight as they always have been. There were risks of thunderstorms all weekend, but that didn't pan out. Uh, but have a look at how worn in that track got. So conditions here in Lenzerheide got considerably worse as the weekend went on. Now this is a prime example of that happening here. This off camber section just got more and more torn up. This high line, which was favored by most riders, you can see just how many exposed routes were coming through. It actually started off all right, and it was just oy, pure loam. I mean, that is some loamy, loamy goodness right there. But actually, you know, once I think this had the highest turnout of uh, riders ever at a World Cup, potentially around 200 when it came to qualifying, it soon brought through every single rock, every single route. And then this section especially went into these big bold out turns and a lot of riders were just struggling to hold those high lines and would end up just washing out down below. So if you're wondering just how steep, how rough and how rutted this track got, well, check this out. I'm at ground level. Oh my God, I'm now at ground level. Madness. It's steep. It's incredibly steep. It's incredibly blown out. The amount of speed riders were carrying down here into the sort of big loose long right hander was absolutely mind boggling. So super rough and rocky. We actually saw in qualifying Oshin O'Callaghan uh, actually catching his foot on a rock and having to finish his run barefooted. So new format changes this year. We had qualifying in downhill that brought the field down to 60 men and 15 women. Then the semi-final the day after, which was broadcast live and brought the field down to 30 men and 10 women. Then of course, the big race, the final. But let's first find out what some of the pros thought about those format changes. You signed my microphone. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Congratulations today. Thank you. First race of the season, new format today. What do you think of the new format? I think it's pretty tough because after qualities, oh no, after semi-finals, winning it made me so hyped and so happy that I didn't want to go back, you know, and put it back on the table. But uh, on the track, pretty fun and easy physically, I would say, like here, it's really good. Like, it works well and it was quite relaxed actually between the runs, so I liked it a lot, but I wasn't able to do as well as I expected for the second run, which is nice because you can always do like corrections and adjustments and I was not the best at that obviously <laughs> but uh, I think it will take a few races to get really in the groove but 
I was a bit skeptical before, I have to admit, I really liked the old format because, yeah. I don't know, it was working well. Yeah. And in the end, I think everybody loved it. The, the crowd on site really had full day of show yeah. and they can go home or chill at the bar now. It's <laughs> like four, it's yeah, chill, right. it's perfect. Do you think on longer tracks or bigger venues, it might be a bit trickier with a tighter time schedule? Yeah, I think it'll be tough. Like places like Val di Sol or uh, Mont saint yeah. like physically, <laughs> we'll get beaten up way more. And so it will be, effort management will be way more important. Yeah. But at the same time, it will be end of the season, so we'll be a little bit more like used to it. And um, I'm a little bit scared of that, <laughs> but we've trained for it. So hopefully we can tackle that and make it happen. But yeah. we'll see. Nice, man. We'll smash it today. Well done. Thank you so much. Camille Balanch took both wins in the qualies and the semis, but arguably action by Rachel Atherton in second place, having not raced full time since 2019 and having a child in that time off. Rachel went on to take an amazing win, her 40th World Cup win, and I think that's the first ever World Cup win by a mother, uh, definitely in Daniel, from what I can remember. Let's catch up with Rich to see how she did it. So where was it won and or lost for Rachel Atherton? Well, absolutely nowhere. She won the whole thing. She was fastest at all four splits, and I think this section here was a crucial one for her. Watching her come down here was like she was on absolute rails. The bike was tracking really nicely, and I could see the bikes of some of the other girls, they were just dancing and skipping about, especially on how steep this was. A lot of their weight was getting pitched forwards. Rach, on the other hand, looked a lot more composed. The bike looked like it was tracking nicely, and you could see she was scrubbing the right amount of speed beforehand, so she didn't have to drag the brakes or sort of get the bike all pitched out of control on the way down, and then she'd carry good speed all of the way through. Henri Perion got 57th in qualifying, but that was the end of his weekend. He crashed in practice and managed to ride qualities, obviously, but was not up to his normal speed, and that'll be a big blow for his overall title ambitions. Aaron Gwynn, who's been going in the right direction last year towards his sort of legendary past performance, had a massive crash in practice and broke his arm. Andreas Kolb, riding for Athens Bikes, qualified fastest, was second in semis and then crashed out in the final, so disappointment for him. But the big story in the men's downhill finals was Jordan Williams, the 18-year-old Brit, took the win in his first ever elite race coming up from juniors. Uh, we talked a lot about him and Jackson Golston, those juniors coming up in the preview show. Jackson was actually sick and still suffering from appendicitis, so pretty good ride there. Loris Vergio was the closest rider and could have won the race had he not made the mistake uh, overshooting a turn. But actually his last split was almost identical to Jordan's even after that uh, point. And Jordan then put half a second into him in the last couple of turns on that track. Rich was up on track to find out where it was won and lost. Your jump and your drop game better be on point when it comes to the Lenza High track because it is absolutely littered with them. Now, when it comes to jumps and drops, a lot of time can be lost, which is why riders weren't taking the big kickers. Like this jump is a great example. There's a huge kicker on the left-hand side and a lower one on the right. Now, you would have thought, well, they're going to hit the big kicker, aren't they? Because it's a big racetrack, big jumps, but they're not. To kind of keep sort of time loss to a minimum, they were hitting the lower, the smaller transition to keep things nice and close to the ground. That way, not as much time as lost. The problem was actually that the riders were hitting these jumps so fast, it was trying to scrub them and keep the bike as low as possible. What, to not be in the air as long? The longer you're in the air, the more time you're losing from sort of getting those wheels on the ground, getting charging on again. So it's actually sort of overshooting jumps in the end turned out to be a bit of a problem. Yes, is this where it was lost for Paul Loris Verge of Trek Factory Racing? So there's this really tight inside right-hander here, which straight lines it through the chicane rather than all the way around the berms. Now, Loris came in off the drop with so much speed, he actually struggled to slow down in time for this turn. And what actually happened, it's so loose and so dusty, he blew out the turn, actually going out really wide onto all the loose gravel, therefore making the next turn further down here even tighter to then get on the inside of this left-hander. Sector three is where this happened and it was his slowest sector of the race. Otherwise, it was ones and twos for him. Did he throw it away at this point? Well, I think he may well have done. This is where it was won for Jordan Williams. This section of track, the final sector behind me, is where he absolutely crushed it. So basically him and Loris were a thousandth of a second apart coming into the final time check, which is just behind the camera here. And Jordan pulled 0.45 of a second, so nearly half a second on this final section. So in this final section, we've got a few crucial turns. We've got a few crucial jumps as well. He managed to scrub those things beautifully and rail those turns as fast as he could really sort of finding grip where some of the others really struggled on the loose terrain to absolutely destroy it on that final bit and take the win. Congrats, Jordan. 
That was an amazing ride from Jordan. The only other time that someone has won their first ever World Cup Dino was apparently Nicolas Vullio. That was a long time ago, and it's well before we had a junior category as well. So anyway, it's a serious club to be in for Jordan, and what a future he has. Let's catch up with him. <laughs> Mate, emotions running high. Congratulations, man. You, you won it. How are you feeling? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Literally, I'm like... <laughs> So in shock, like, it's insane. How did you feel coming into the race? Do you think, like, this could ever happen? No, well, a bit, but I just tried to put down the best run I could and then see where I ended up. I wanted to be in top ten and hoping for top five, but, yeah, to go out and win my first ever Elite World Cup, like, <laughs> what? It's like, <laughs> wow. All right, mate, look, emotions are running high. I'm going to leave you to it, but congratulations, dude. Smashed it. Cheers. Anyway, that was a mega weekend of mountain bike racing. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And actually, we're not stopping there. We are going straight to Leo Gang this weekend. And I'm going to be there as well. Check out some of the bikes. Watch some of the racing. Of course, it's back here on GMBN Racing and on GCM+. Plus. We can watch all the live elite finals, plus the under 23 and the juniors downhill. So get involved. If you're a big mountain bike race fan, then that's the place to be.